if you fired all three million government employees, put them out of work, how much would you save? You can do the numbers on this. You would save 4.3% of the federal budget. In this video, Neil deGrasse Tyson takes a look at Elon Musk and Doge, specifically in terms of uh, cutting NASA funding. And Neil deGrasse Tyson says, maybe I'm biased, I am a scientist, but he really breaks it down in the way that only Neil deGrasse Tyson can. Elon Musk does not appear in this video other than this clip. Why don't we watch this together? I'm gonna have opinions, and then I wanna know what you think in the comments. Budget cuts to science agencies. What's up with that? Consider a couple of things. We're trying to save money. Who doesn't want to save money? The Department of Government Efficiency is attempting that, run by the richest person in the world, who, as of today or last week, is valued at $330 billion. I want you to understand how much money that is. So, if you take $330 billion and represent it by $100 bills, if you lay them end to end, how far will it go? It will go around the earth three times. Then, with what's left over, you can sort of tape them together as a kind of a ribbon and ascend into the sky and into space and reach the moon. By then, you would have used up all the $100 bills that comprise $330 billion. There's one bit of information. Another bit of information. If you fired all three million government employees, put them out of work, how much would you save? You can do the numbers on this. You would save 4.3% of the federal budget. That's all. So the government is spending money on something else that represents the bulk of what the federal budget is. Ask a bigger question. If you go and give these trims to all of these agencies, and by the way, chainsaws are not good at trims. They're like for cutting down the middle. But anyhow, you give like a haircut. You cut one part of an agency here, you trim it there, nip tuck there, and then you say, we saved millions of dollars. So it sounds like a lot of money, but it's not. So to cherry pick the bits and pieces of one agency and another on the grounds that that's somehow gonna transform how the government operates, I think is a little short-sighted. A lot short-sighted. NASA, their plans to cut half of its science budget, including the removal of the office of the chief scientist. The chief scientist is the person who offers a vision for which way the science directorate is gonna go. There's astrophysics, there's planetary science, you have earth science, there's heliophysics, understanding the sun and space weather. When the sun has an explosion, you kinda wanna know about that. High energy streams of particles head towards earth and could take out our satellites upon which so much of our modern civilization depends. There's also planetary exploration and in there is the search for life. All of that is in the science mission directorate. So you want to cut that to save money? Um, how much money is that? How much is the total NASA budget compared to your tax dollar? It is less than four-tenths of one percent of your tax dollar. If I cut off four-tenths of one percent from the width of this dollar, it doesn't even get into the paint. And you want to trim NASA to save federal expenditures? Really? Is that what's happening there? Now I'm a scientist. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe. Sure. I'll give you that. However, let's go back in time. I have a document here. Science, the endless frontier. Report to the president on a program for post-war scientific research by Van Ever Bush, director of the Office of Science Research and Development, a brand new agency of the government that saw what role science played in our health, our wealth, and our security. And this document, dated from the late 1940s, established the science agenda of the United States. This was the original thinking that led to the formation of the National Science Foundation. 10 years later, Russia, Soviet Union launches Sputnik. Within 12 months, we create NASA in response to that. Science is not just something 
scientists do in the back lab? Science is foundational to our health, our wealth, our security. No, you don't see it every day because it happens in labs with nameless scientists who publish papers that only other fellow scientists recognize and can understand. But over the years, those discoveries work their way, as they always do, into our lives. We are in the centennial decade of the 1920s of the development and discoveries of quantum physics. If you were around back then, what would you be saying? Oh, we don't need this. These are just atoms. No, who cares about atoms? I just care about solid things that I can see and recognize and understand. Do you realize there is no creation, storage, or retrieval of information without an exploitation of the quantum? There is no IT revolution without the quantum, the foundations of our information technology culture. These are scientists working on a frontier in the roaring 20s when no one else is caring about it, but you had people who did. And you know where a lot of that research happens? By scientists in research universities. Not in the R&D labs of corporations, because they have to make a buck at the end of the day. That R&D has to have a sight line that reaches to a bottom line, to an ROI, a return on that investment. Whereas scientists working for the pure joy of discovery on the frontier of their fields, there's no expectation that their discovery in that moment is gonna make money for anybody. That happens later. These are the foundations of what would become civilization. And they understood that coming out of the Second World War. And to the extent that we do not understand that today, fine, we, that's what you want. Cut the NASA budget. You do that, we recede, not just for there, for NOAA. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, for the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency. Three organizations, NASA, NOAA, and the EPA, all signed into existence by Republican presidents, I might add. Which, of course, is relevant because these are not Republican versus Democrat issues. They are about undermining the various institutions that support our democracy. And you might say, well, science isn't that. But it makes America weaker if we cut these institutions. If we cut science and research and things that go towards truth, we are undermining truth. And then the truth moves closer to whatever they dictate that it is. NASA by Dwight Eisenhower in 1958. NOAA and the Environmental Protection Agency is 1970. Signed into existence by President Richard Nixon. Yeah, we could just get rid of it all, I suppose, and you'd save a little bit of money. At what cost? We would cede leadership in these domains to other countries who, based on my read, care more about science than we currently do. That should worry any scientist, of course, but it should especially worry the public because innovations in science and technology are the engines of tomorrow's economy. One thing that this country, the United States of America, has been really good at my entire lifetime is leading the world in science. NASA is the envy of the world, one of the shining jewels in the crown of what it is to be American, the discoveries of NASA. And to go into that less than 0.4% cut money on the grounds that that's gonna make some difference to this country, to our budget woes, I don't understand that. Two generations from now, when we are trailing in the world on every important scientific advance that became foundational to the future health, wealth, and securities of other countries, we will look around and say, oh my gosh, the boat left without us. We were complacent. We reduced our investments when we should have been increasing them. Just as Van Aver Bush described in this document from what is now 80 years ago, they understood so that we Americans can reap the benefits of the health, the wealth, and the security that fundamental investments in science delivers. Without that, the rest of the world will pass us by and we'll spend an entire generation trying to catch up when it turns around and bites us in the ass when we realize that we are trailing the world instead of leading it in every way that has mattered to 20th century America. And that's what's up with that. Yeah. I mean, 
these guys aren't invested in America succeeding long term. It's rip and run. And I say that a lot. And what I mean by rip and run, Qatar is giving Trump, a, he says he's giving it to America, but he's giving, they're giving Trump a luxury jet to use as Air Force One. Uh, they're, they're building him a golf resort that's worth $5 billion or something like that. Like, the, they're not planning on sticking around when the water gets too hot and we finally wake up and it looks like their neck might be in the guillotine, they're going to bounce. They're going to take all the money that they, they looted from this nation and left, leave it in shambles and flames and they're just going to bounce. <laughs> that's, they're not in this for the long haul. They're going to pocket as much of our money and wealth as they possibly can and then they're going to cut bait and we're the bait. Let me know what you think of the comments.